Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Morning Coffee. I got my coffee locked and loaded, ready to go, because we're going to talk about Bitcoin, potentially, and crypto and altcoins going ballistic very, very soon. So everything seems to be on track, except uh, that after closing the monthly on a new all time high, we are red right now. So we are going to talk about that as well. And we are going to talk about the economy price, why it is going down still and where it could be going. So a little bit of economy price prediction there and then a lot of VV stuff that is coming out right now. So all of that right after the intro. So good morning, good morning, good morning to every one of you. And um, I see that apparently uh, me going live a little bit earlier did not do any differences here to, to people. Um, we have a lot of people already here. I just need to align my my stuff a little bit more here. Why is this not? This is not this is not what I want. Uh, anyways, uh, we have G money in the house and everyone else is too sleepy to even hit the keyboard or probably in the shower or I don't know what or tuning in from the US on a very late hour. So that could be also happening. You know what? Happy Easter everyone. How are you doing? How did you spend your days? Did you enjoy with family? Have you been productive on on your crypto investments? Um, what have or have you been watching the price like every day on a minute to see when it is finally getting up? Let me know. But I for myself, I've just this was the first time ever in my life that I spent um, Easter without family uh, and only with my girlfriend. So we didn't go visit anyone um, instead we worked on our stuff. I mean, YouTube channel and whatnot, right? So that was Easter for me. And yesterday was April Fool's. So yesterday there was really no reason to go online uh, because half of the stuff that's being put out, you cannot believe anyways. And even today using the content of others is risky because you don't know who was trolling yesterday. Uh, I really hate April Fool's like it's super funny. I know I know and so on. But yeah, anyways, let's go with it's the second of April. It's Tuesday for me. It's going to be a short week because this is the first working day. This is also the reason why I'm so early here with the stream. And let's talk about Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is on the daily red. And we are down to 66,400 after closing the monthly on a 71,000 roundabout new all time high. And usually it is like, oh, uh, we should be going crazy after that. But yeah, a chill because this is only the first 24 hours after that, um, or let's say the first 48 hours after that um, closing. And yes, a correction to reset some indicators before you go pumping is absolutely valid. So let's see what's happening here a little bit better. So as we outlined before, if you look at the RSI, we had a nice fat head and shoulders that look pretty exact. And since then we are correcting. And also um, we see this here we have formed, even though closing on a new all time high, we have formed a lower high for for Bitcoin on the very short term. So on the other hand, if you want to draw in a little bit more to this, you kind of have this pattern here, something like this. So probably, probably somehow we are we are forming a consolidation or so. And hopefully then after the halving, which is the green bar here, we are going upwards. So definitely not too bad to reset some indicators, especially here on the daily. And um, I think that's it's by the dip time, because to be honest, if you I don't know if we can display this here, but if I get rid of the TSI for a second, we might 
uh, find um, minor cost. Is there a uh, cost of bi blockchain for bi co electricity cost of Bitcoin? Is that it? No, that's not it, but it's going up. Cost, I want to see cost of production, but I don't know. Bitcoin production cost. There you go. Bitcoin production cost. Why doesn't it? Uh, did it? Oh, I didn't close the other one. There we go. Bitcoin product. You see, I'm fully prepared at seven in the morning. Not. There you go. Okay. So we see that usually Bitcoin stays within the cost of production um, but, uh, above the lower band. And the lower band is 30,000, right? So what's interesting about this now is, again, you see the price in here. It's a, it's a little bit messy, but you get where I'm going at. Um, so you see here the upper lower bands, this is the cost of production. If you, we zoom out a little bit more, like on a bull market, we are usually up above the cost of production. And what's the most important thing here is, if we go to the previous halving, so you see the green bar for the previous halving here, the cost of production jumps and doubles. Okay, so where is that like? Here it's 4,000 and then it's 8,000, right? So we are at 30,000 and our cost of production in uh, 20, no, in 18 days is going to jump to here, 60,000. Because we get a production reward halving, so to put out the same Bitcoin, we double, right? So the cost of production right now is flatlining at 30,000, which means theoretically our floor is at 60,000. Because, but no miner would sell Bitcoin at 60,000 when it costs them to produce at 60,000. Okay, so this means that probably this correction is not going much further than we are right now. And that's about it. That's what I wanted to show you with the cost of production. I think it's valid to look at this, probably not useful to look at it every day, but you have to know that the cost of production is going to increase here. So um, let's see uh, who's here. We have the... Um, Oh, this is chat. We have Prince in the house. Good morning. We have Conquer GM. We have Muhammad Siddiq shilling the Chuck coin that I see everywhere now. So good for everyone who's in that and pumping their bags. Roman Frey is also here. GM. So it seems that I get some some other people. <laughs> chuck Chuck Chuck. Yeah, there you go. Feel feel free to shill it here in the chat. No problem at all. Um, anyways, I think that even if we correct, I think that we will not correct more than to 60,000, which is, by the way, the support that we have here. Okay, so this is there and there about, right? The support that we have found here. So if we would range on top of the 60K in anticipation of the halving and then at some point break out, I would see that is something reasonable. Abdullah is shilling Manta, that's also fine. Guys, if you enjoy this insight here on where we are and cost of production and so on, then please smash up the like button right now. We have over 20 people in here. We have Jordan here, good morning. Also by Chuck, oh God, you too. Okay, um, Roman asks if I had nice uh, Easter um, celebrations. I did. Um, I hope you did too. Uh, although not nothing big. Wild FPV says when bronze ticks airdrop. I have no idea to be honest. But second answer to why uh, we are red yeah, today is because a lot of people thought, oh, 
we have a monthly close on Bitcoin, let's go along. <laughs> and um, yeah, so if you look here, right, um, I'll, I'll put the chat over the Bitcoin liquidations and I'll get myself out of the way. You see this on the right, this, why is my screen bigger than what it actually lets me transmit? That is a question. So let's, let's fix that. Uh, so there we go. Um, in the last 24 hours, five, a half a billion US dollars in longs have been liquidated. Last 24 hours was what? April Fool's. So only this is no joke. This is real. So, and of this 417 US dollars were longs. So everyone got wrecked on, uh, on, oh, uh, on the very obvious, not so obvious, hey, we are going to pump after, because just some people that are dealing with metrics are saying uh, that Bitcoin is going to pump after closing a monthly on a new all-time high. So let's look at the monthly here. And by the way, ignore my lines. Bear with me until it looks good. Um, the reason for this is basically this. Let me, let me put out the lines. Every time we pass, like we close a monthly after or at all-time high, we get a massive multi-month rally. Okay, so here, last bull market, it was a 370 pump. And then the one before it was a 1,600% pump after closing the all-time high or after closing at all-time high on a monthly. So now we did that just now and everyone was like, oh, in the second this happens, let's go long. And that's not ideal for trading especially because I mean, how are you going to leverage trade something that happens on a monthly right so um anyways i'm not a trader so i can't tell you but what i can tell you is that people got that that five, half a billion of longs got liquidated and that is the reason why we are red today and yesterday so what do we have here we have a nice little dip of 6.45 uh and let me let me open this up this opens up to a buy the dip event i mean for example optimism right optimism is down you see it above my video here optimism is down 22 percent i don't know maybe there's something else you always have to, you cannot just buy the dip without knowing what's going on otherwise you can buy a failing coin but i guess optimism is not failing um, but I would check obviously I would check before that right so if you look at the all the coins I mean on the yearly and on the 90 days they look pretty strong but uh, some of these coins get really bleed right now and this could be for example Celestia right everyone's like buying hardcore Celestia Celestia is down 30% on the month and even 5% on the 90 day. So that's pretty big dip, in my opinion. Um, so three months ago when everyone was hyped, now we're under that. Um, what else is down? BSV, okay. Axie is down. Axie had already a big bull run. Would I go with it? I don't know. Um, Flare is down 25%, but pretty big up on 90 day so I'd like look at live coin watch and look at what is down and then also maybe choose another site here to watch what is down and where I can buy the dip but ideally I want to have something that did not pump thousands of percent yet and still is a good project maybe something that's not in the narrative so much for example blur blur is still down on the yearly why because it's an nft marketplace and nfts are just not the hot shit even though from the bottom i am up like 150 percent on blur so yeah 
that is happening. Mm. Other than that, feel free to do that yourself because we don't have enough time. What I want to get at is on the Bitcoin, get the check, chat back so you can show Chuck. <laughs> um, let's see the chat. Uh, Mr. Plan Professor Stacks is king, Bitcoin DeFi. Okay. Why no bull on Vivi yet? No action at all. Check out my. Today, there will be a community, like a post on YouTube coming out discussing that. NFTs are 10 months behind the crypto, the Bitcoin cycle, more or less. Okay. So, what's interesting is BlackRock inflow versus gray, grayscale outflow, they're like evening out they're like bouncing around each other so blackrock is basically picking up everything that grayscale drops only that at some point grayscale will drop less but the question is will blackrock buy less and the second one is uh what about the other eight ETFs, right? So I think that price will start rising quickly again once one of these factors are happening. Uh, I'm building a big bag of Avalanche. That's probably a good bet, to be honest. I mean, Avalanche already has a pretty big market cap, so the multiples might be, what, 10, 20x? More like 10x, probably. Um, and by the way, thanks for smashing the, the, the emojis there. Everything else is trash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why Omi has a <laughs> Nice, the party is going on here. Hey, I should do the crypto morning coffee that early. That sounds good, right? I mean, it seems that I, that some people just did not go to bed just yet. Look up Chuck chart. Okay. Why not? Why not look up the Chuck chart? But let me first get um this this finished here so bitcoin is going to have a pretty massive driver and i mean we didn't even pass the all-time high right so um that is definitely happening so why do i think that 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 like crypto in general is going absolutely ballistic we have this of tech dev here chart pattern this is usually the place where things go vertical um we have the gaussian channel we have the last cycles and we ha we are forming like literally the same pattern on the total market cap of crypto. Is there much to say? Well, every time this breakout happens with retest here, here and here, after forming such a pattern here, here and here, after breaking the upside and forming a green Gaussian channel here, here and here, we are at the inflection point where we would say, okay, you run into a little bit of resistance and then you go on a massive pump for the total crypto market cap. Now, this looks small, but look carefully. We went from the yellow arrow or from the blue circle from 130, 150 million dollar market cap to half a billion, 5x. Actually, to more than half a billion, we went from eighty, from seventy billion, to almost half a trillion, and then in the uh, 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 in the last cycle, I think we went more than that. By the way, a little bit, but somewhat like that, um, and then we w we went from or we are at three hundred something billion and we could see something like 1.3 trillion but this is actually this is not the total market cap this is the total market cap and this is why i'm confused with the numbers this is the others chart basically this is uh, excluding the top 10 the stable coins and then it's also on a weekly so if we exclude the top 10, which are basically carrying half, like more than half right now, because Bitcoin dominance is already at 50%, and we exclude all the Ethereum, Solana, BNB, and whatnot, yeah, then this makes sense. And that means that the altcoins, that the, the small altcoins going to a trillion or so, that would, yeah, put us at a, a nice little breakout here. 
So this is why I think that that all of these altcoins, there should be a little, there should be a section of each portfolio in in smaller altcoins to make to get this ballistic move for crypto. But in general, it's also happening very very soon. I mean, I showed this in my video, but not everyone has seen it. So maybe we can show it here again. We are nowhere near a top. In fact, we are before a halving and you see the halving here. If we if you use it, you can check this out for yourself on blockchaincenter.net rainbow chart. Let's say we would be in a premature cycle and we would top out like a left translated cycle as some people as some people are saying. And we would top out to the end of the year not somewhere in Q1 or Q2 in 2025, but actually in the end of the year. 22 of December, this same price band, if we just would flatline in this, we would be at 85,000, but that's not realistic. Realistic is that we touch some of the three upper orange bands, which are at 144,000 in the worst case, 186,000 in what it always hit in the bands and 243,000 if we go into bubble territory. Okay, so if we have our Bitcoin top premature, it would be somewhere between 150 and 250K. The, if it performs more like this, it goes to 180K. If it performs like these, it goes to 240k. But what if we top out in in the end of Q1 or in Q yeah, in Q1 2025, then we are at 153, 197,000 or 258,000. So I put my profit taking for crypto after that, after hitting after getting with Bitcoin into these bands and ranges and see it hit resistance, right? plus all of the other indicators that I'm putting out on my channel here. And by the way, this is only the lower range of that band. The upper range of that band here is 197,000, 258,000 and 350,000. So I think there is a fairly good chance that we just smash through 100K pretty soon. So right, after, right at the uh, uh, halving, already the hodl band is on an upper limit of 90,000. So we, we would come very close. I think that being conservative is fine, but also being a little bit realistic together with all that money printing is also interesting. Check out the community post that I did. If you're subscribed, you can see it, I think. Um, the community post that I did about debt print money printing to erase debt to re erase interest and to stay alive as governments is is key here i think we are going to see the mother of all bull markets if if the us and all the other countries have to print away their interest rates i mean what like this is trillions right of stimuli over the next two years so altcoins man they are going to fly so hard can't see the full chart. Uh, you're blocking the right side of the chart. Yeah, but there's nothing like, I mean, there is nothing uh, on the right side of that chart, but uh, here you go. <laughs> oh, maybe from the, from the, let me, let me get my face out of the way here. So this empty, right, this space. But what you mean is probably when I go here on the beginning of 2025, Basic. This is also interesting. Let's say, let's look very much in the future and let's just say we have a bear market uh, at in the beginning, in the end of 2025, beginning of 2026, like our lowest, lowest hardcore, lowest bear market point that early would be 40 to 52,000 Bitcoin. Probably it takes us a year to fall down to go down so we are more likely here 
somewhere here, which put us at 50 to 61,000 in the lowest band. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, the, the emojis being it. Guys, 30 people here in the morning is not really not bad and it's the evening for some of the people, so let's get this party started. Um, and you hitting hit, hitting these stuffs, pretty nice. Okay, thank you for that. So the party is going on. Last quick look before we go to Ecomi and Vivi. Bitcoin dominance. It's happening right now. And um, I want to I want to get this correct here. And where is my cam and my chat? I mean, if you're already spamming the chat, you should be visible, right? There you go. So Bitcoin dominance is coiling up. It's getting ready for a breakout. Another indicator for that things are going crazy soon. Also, if you consider that we might be just breaking out of a massive, I mean, if we break out to the upside, this could be pretty big, like pretty big move upwards. Um, if we hit our head here, we could see more like all connection. We will see, but so far we have a green big candle. We are at 54% Bitcoin dominance. So it's still Bitcoin season. Everything you saw from the altcoins has nothing to do with any altcoin season. Mother of altcoin seasons could be coming. Let's move a little bit faster here. Um, and go straight to Ecomi. <laughs> I hope Jordan is still hitting the party buttons here. But I've made, I, tr I think I've, I just used, look, this is what I use my Easter holidays for. I tried to make it very clear for everyone that this is <laughs> a whale trading range and has nothing to do with organic buying. And uh, I mean, you see it here you have a whale resistance and a rail buying range. And between that, whales are just playing ping pong with the price. Ding dong. Here we go, bing bong, right? Uh, and if you look at the end of this range, we just had it again. I mean, we had a pretty big wick, like the wick went higher than ever before, which is good. But the price action is the same. So from that wick high to where we are, we have a 45% corrective move and Ecomi is headed towards the lower whale accumulation zone. And maybe we can print another third whale there in the future. So we have two touch points. Maybe we get a third one to like form something like a real triple bottom. Um, no, but I think that Ecomi will do this move down into this accumulation range just because John's crypto therapy is also saying that and usually he's been very spot on and a whale himself. So John's crypto therapy has taken this trade himself up here, right? I mean, he said so. So, uh, and this guy has billions of Omi tokens, so he can just drive this down if he wants to. But the good thing is we get more exchanges, probably we'll get the max C announcement at some point. The question is if it will do anything for the price just yet. But as I said, and the post will come out today, later in the evening, the NFT market is behind. Blur is not going as well as it should be. Yeah. When do you think full altcoin season starts like a massive altcoin move will happen together with bitcoin and then when bitcoin tops out there will be a big big degenerate altcoin season when bitcoin loses loses all its dominance so that we will see it on this channel and i'll tell you when i think it is happening it it looks like this it looks like this here this massive waterfall in red on Bitcoin dominance. So once we see that, I think it's time. Uh, and we will. you also will see this altcoin season, not like right now, oh, this coin did 50%. It will be like this coin did 50% every day since 20 days. 
So <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk Vivi. Vivi updates a little bit because I mean for Ecomi there's not much to say, but I think Ecomi will come back at some point. It just takes longer than other altcoins, which is good because then you can take profit on all the other altcoins and then just look and focus at Ecomi price action, right? It it would be good if not everything has to happen at the same time. Uh Jay Reyes says thank you for moving. What you're blocking the chat again? I'm not blocking anything. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so Vivi is saying here, join us this week. We chat with David Yu and the creators of The Addiction and Vincent Zurzulo, uh, David Quinn for Vivi's first YouTube premiere. Mark uh, your calendars 4th of April, 5 p.m. So there will be a little bit of a chat. Uh, also regarding the comic that they they launch from independent artists by the way i think they should launch also the um like more of these comics that are not marvels it could be very small edition sizes but yeah um big uh wise grouch says does Bl uh, blockchain data matter like if you have an, an nft that only has one owner x would that have more value than an nft that has been traded around yeah it could be but also it could have more value if your nft was owned by a, a superstar before so let's say let's say for example, uh, um, I don't know, like Lionel Messi buys some NFTs and everyone knows Lionel Messi's account on Vivi and then he sells something and you buy it and it says that the previous owner was Messi. So it could add some value for people that this specific NFT has been even purchased on drop by Messi to say, oh, look, I got the number X that Messi got on drop and he sold it. I bought it. Right. So it could go both ways. Or you could say, oh, this NFT just literally has been flipped around for two years and no one wanted it versus I have a clean one that has no previous owners from the drop. It could have value to people like collectible value. Although I think it's not too big. Yeah. Okay, so this is this event is happening. I'm going to watch this no matter what, because probably and sometimes there is some good information in that, right? Um, then I don't know. And now we have to be careful, but I think this is real because they did another April Fools. So I think this is not April Fools. Collect the Spidey suit that introduced your favorite symbiote. Peter Parker didn't realize the suit was li a living symbiote. All he knew is it gave him the edge he needed in the battle world. Okay, so this looks good. It has no face, so it looks good. Just jokes aside, I mean... And it's an animated plus sound Spider-Man symbiote so suit rare with two and a half thousand editions. So we saw that Spider-Gwen sold out. I think that this thing, having a couple of editions more, is going to sell out as well and probably is going to go above retail. So I am inclined to put down some MCP points even to obtain this one. It's also 10 gems more expensive, but I think this is like, since the comic with the um, symbiote Spider-Man on the front was already a, a big deal, I think this could be, yeah, this could be bigger. So do I want to buy this for 50 gems? I think so. Do I want to put MCP points down? I think so too. It's a one, it's an animated collectible. It looks pretty good. Um, maybe hit a good mint. Maybe hit an important mint. Who knows? 
I think I'll go for it. What do you think? Do you guys go for it? Jordan says, not me cooking food. <laughs> then uh, happy cooking. Uh, Big A says, I've been through multiple alt seasons over the past decade, but when do you think it happens this run, mid-24 or later? <clears throat> I'd say later, like end of 24 to beginning of 25, probably. I think as long as Bitcoin rallies, dominance will stay more or less the same or even go up. So I say the altcoin season happens more to beginning of 25. What we have as a left translated cycle at the moment is probably going to get evened out by lengthening cycle theory. And also there's still the potential to have um, diminishing returns being invalidated. But definitely first time using MCP. Yeah, and, and then also... I'm not going to use only a couple. I'm probably going to use a bigger chunk of my MCP just to make sure. Um, then also on April 3rd, so tomorrow, we're getting a lot of new comics of which probably, and we should try to get it on stream, probably Deadpool 1. So tomorrow's morning stream should be it. Probably Deadpool 1 and Green Goblin 1 are the things that are going to sell out fairly quickly. And um, there is something that I want to discuss in a second here, but I only have like two to three minutes left uh, for the stream. Uh, so, we, um, so we get all of these comics. These are like 12 comics, so 12,000 new editions, which is fine, I think. Now they... If they release this stuff, this is fine because this is in line more or less with two drops, 5,000 each before. So there are a couple of it versions that are coming out in, uh, tomorrow that I want to grab at least one or so of the stat pool. Just to try it. Will Pokemon come to Vivi? Hey, big question, like big news question. Eventually, maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Cannot answer that, not going to say that. So here's a nice take of Living Aloha. And I think Living Aloha is putting out some really good content and having only 376 followers is a real shame. So I think you should follow Living Aloha. Also, he has a YouTube channel um, and he's putting out a lot of data like on drops. So it's, it's good stuff. Um, so Living Aloha is saying, I think Vivi is going to turn around, uh, the corner in April 2024. The reason is that Vivi Comics has turned the revenue around, even though I reported that March revenue was the lowest in a company's history. Remember that gems spent in the secondary are not revenue, which is true. Vivi revenue is only the 2.5% of those gems spent in secondary. Primary goes more to them, right? The good and the bad about VV Comics is as follows. The bad is that limited number of wallets are generating the bulk of the sales. This is normal bear market behavior, in my opinion. The good is that if more users come in, the sales should increase tremendously. It will not take a lot of new users for this. I would anticipate that VV will up the mint numbers from 1,000 uh, if this does occur. So I think so too. I think that these... Comics that we're getting with 1,000 editions and 40 on the secret rare are bear market stuff. So more to the end of the year, not maybe not in April, but to the end of the year, I expect them to release comics that have more than 1,000 editions um, as more buyers are coming in for those. Because, I mean, you see right now that basically for these deluxe editions on Vivi Comics, uh, for the last, um, what what was the last comic? The Uncanny X-Men 97. I mean, it took literally two minutes and it was sold out. Had they put the Uncanny 97 at 1.5K, it would have taken five minutes and it would have sold out. So they might feel, okay, on these editions that are hyped, they're leaving some money on the table. So they will increase some of these comics in terms of limited editions, I think which means that gradually people will be like, oh, 
okay, 1.5K, but the other ones, so the price will increase on the more limited ones. And then people will go after the 1.5K because they know that in the future there will be 2 and 3K. I think we will build back on these addition numbers as we did before um, on the VV Comics side. And also for the collectibles. You see right now VV found the sweet spot of 2.2K on a good design collectible. The suit will definitely sell out on 2.5k I have no doubt and probably go above retail so they will be kind of dropping this until they see that a lot of people don't get anything on the drop and then probably gradually will increase the edition sizes while the price on this very low bear market editions will also increase and people will try to have some profits there I think that's going to happen but it will take the entire summer, summer on, uh, on, on the Northern Hemisphere at least, going into October for this to play out like a massive round, rounding bottom. But anyways, guys, smash up the like button. For over 40 people here, I am impressed. Thanks for shilling your stuff here. Thanks for getting the party started in the chat. And thanks for subscribing, liking, ticking the bell and so on. Stay tuned for more content and guys, Wherever you are on the world, have a great morning, evening, day, night or afternoon. And I see you tomorrow at Crypto Morning Coffee and in some other content that I put out.